Fight the Cure with Metal Bonnie with us today. We have one and only Shamir of Destruction. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing good, doing good. Coming soon, so we're all excited. Ah, exactly. Under attack. Just a month left for the release. I mean, it's it's been a while. I mean, uh, four years approximately since the last album, yeah, Spiritual yeah. Genocide. You know, obviously the guys must be very excited that to have a new album finally out. Yeah, we've been very productive in the last 17 years. You know, we did like releases almost every year, mm-hmm. and now we took our time because uh, yeah, it was time for it. You know, we're uh, we thought um, we changed some procedures so this time for the recordings and uh, and we wanted to have more time for the songwriting and it was worth it. You know, in the end, sometimes it's good to to change the procedure. Exactly, because spiritual genocide came out pretty quickly. And then you guys took a good amount of time. Generally, you have this uh, cycle of, you know, two years or two and a half per album. But this was, you know, you took a good amount of time. And I also know you went through multiple studios. So what was it like changing studios? You know, probably you you, you use it on three different studios, right? Uh, yeah, actually, we've, we've been in two studios. Like uh, one studio where we were like several times mm-hmm. because we recorded the album in like six or seven steps. Okay. And then you went into a, a different studio in Germany to record the drums mm-hmm. because you wanted to have a big room and didn't, we didn't change, uh, we didn't use any any kind of samples for the album. It's like real drums, so we, we wanted to have a good drum sound, so we've been putting special effort on the drum recording also this time. And uh, it was a good thing for us because this way we do, didn't have to stop touring because we've always been playing the whole year. Yeah. And we didn't have to do a big break because normally what happens when you do an album is you start writing, you stay home, you write, you record them, then you record the album, and for like four or five months you do nothing than the album. And we didn't want to do that. We wanted to still play, and uh, it was a good thing for us because we like a live band. We like to play, and uh, it keeps the connection with the fans and the energy levels. And uh, I think it's good. It's good to play all the time. It's like I see it like sports, you know. Absolutely. When you're a sportsman and, and, and you don't do your your workouts, you know, you can get rusty. And it's the same when you don't play. But when you, if, if I don't play for four weeks, it's very hard to get into a headliner show. Like, okay. I feel like, I, I feel bad afterwards, you know, like everything hurts. So it's it's good to play. And uh, for us, uh, we have this rule that we have shows every month so to keep fit. And it's usually a good thing. That's and this okay. time we did it this way because we didn't want to stop. And uh, I think it's the first time we recorded this way, and uh, I would totally do it again. It was actually it keeps the, the the studio ideas fresh, you know, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's a good thing, you know. Like when you're too long in the studio, sometimes you get like blind, you know. Yeah, it's sometimes like, it just takes a toll on the body. You work, you your ideas, and you kind of it's it's an overdose, you know. So right. this way it keeps fresh. Uh, it was good for us. Excellent. That's good to hear. And you've also dedicated uh, a song to your friends on the internet <laughs> called Second to None. You know, it's all about trolling. So I, I, I wondered the moment I heard it, like what exactly, you know, triggered this idea to write a song about the so-called internet keyboard warriors? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you face them every day, you know, uh, no matter where you go, they're, they're hanging there and they're hating, you know? Yeah. And, uh, of course, it's kind of uh, tragic to see that people have nothing else to do than hate. You know, all this energy uh, could be positive energy, but it's not. You know, and uh, when you're a band, of course, you have to live with this. You know, like I'm doing it for 33 years. You know, I mean, I had so much hate before, but now on the net, you see it everywhere. All the bands get the haters. You know, and sure. and of course, also normal normal people. You know, normal people get fucking bullied and stalked, and it happened to my girl. It happened to friends of mine. It happened to me. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird. Like, well, where's the internet going? Like, why is there all this hate in the net? And uh, this uh, thing to non song from for, for me was just like a, a little wake up call and a little fuck 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 you finger, you know, like guys, what the fuck are you doing? And of course, we knew it would get the the haters would hate it, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to expect that. But actually, I was surprised that like you know, like now on. On YouTube, the, the lyric video has like I don't know 50, 60,000 yes, views, right. and only like 140 or 150 hates, like dislikes. Mm-hmm. That's actually not so much. So, <laughs> so the amount of haters, the amount of haters is not as high as we think. You know, that's something I learned about this hate uh, test, actually. You know, but it's it's um, 
those people are like everywhere and they hate everything, you know. So they're like on Blabbermouth and they're on YouTube and they're on other forums and they, they have the biggest mouth there. That's why we hear them, you know. But I don't think it's actually so many haters there and uh, I just think as, you know, use your, your energy for something positive mm -hmm. and I... Right. I, I think the, the internet doesn't forget. So if you ha write a hate post to somebody, it might be forever on on True. the forum. You know, Absolutely. it's always it's 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 something you cannot take back. So watch your mouth. You know, definitely, what... definitely, it's good to hear that. And and also the other tracks that have shaped up really well. I mean, the first minute. I mean, the moment I played Under Attack. I mean, I thought, okay, okay the guys are trying to fool me with the first ten seconds of more like a clean acoustic pattern, and then boom, that was that. In your face sound, and there are various such moments on the album, even a track like Pathogenic, which is totally brutalized in terms of how the songs are written. I feel you have spent a lot of time on each track instead of just, you know, uh, giving it a thought and then doing the normal thing. But each track has a value here. Each track signifies something. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice to uh, just hear the difference. I think we, we try this time to, to make every song a little bit different, you know. It, it's... Uh, People always say, yeah, thrash metal, every song sounds the same. Mm -hmm. And I think it's totally not true, you know. And uh, we, we have tried to, um, you know, work with a little bit different ideas, have, uh, have a little bit more of, um, of traditional uh, harmony res resolutions this time, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit more heavy metal here and there also, you know. Right. And also, um, we try to keep the album interesting, that every song has kind of different beats per minute, you know, it's not... It's fa it's a fast album has love speed yeah. but still has love variation and uh, I think that uh, makes the album strong that it has uh, all the aggress aggressivity and the, and the speed but still a lot of uh, um, different parts and interesting moments you know and I think uh, that was good that uh, the songwriting you know uh, we had enough time this time to have a, develop a lot of good ideas for the album mm -hmm. I think you can hear this. Absolutely, and your voice is still there, that, that piercing through the glass every time I listen, and, and on top of the riffs which you, you know, you and you know, even Mike has written, is amazing. I mean, it's it, it's just a package of three when you guys deliver beyond expectation. I'm sure fans are going to love this album as well. So, you know, three decade long career, you're into your fourth now, so many albums already out. Does it get difficult to write new songs which have a meaning, you know, keeping in mind that that you've been doing it for a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, when you think about it, uh, it scares you a bit, you know, like, uh, there's a big legacy, a lot of expectations, and, but on the other hand, uh, for this album, I came out of the, the Panzer experience, which was, like, great experience for Absolutely. me. To write with other songwriters and uh, um, play music that was important for me in my youth, you know, and mm -hmm. I came very confident out of the songwriting from Panzer and the, I knew when I would sit down for destruction, I would have a lot of great ideas, and and it, it was like that. And uh, of course, sometimes you think about, you know, the expectations and the legacy and stuff. But in the end, when I write stuff and we record the first demos, mm -hmm. and I dig it and I like it and I get excited, then I also know that the fans will like it, you know, because I'm a fan myself of this kind of music. So, and even if you write stuff, you know, it has to excite yourself also first. Sometimes, there's riffs. That we don't use because you know we play them for each other and we're not excited. It's like right. oh, you know, nothing special. Let's let's do something else. You know. Awesome. That's good to hear. And and Vava has brought in a lot of influences. I mean, I follow his other project Indukti as well. And then I heard a lot of stuff which is which has put in a lot of prog elements in his drumming. And I'm sure you guys have had a great feeling to have such great intelligent ideas from him on this album. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important that a drummer picks up the ideas, you know, and uh, he's a very intelligent drummer, as you said. He's been studying drums and percussion before. He played prog rock. He's a big, you know, lover of classical thrash and heavy metal. Right. So uh, in the studio, we've been pushing him to, you know, go beyond his uh, stuff, you know. Sometimes uh, it's good when you, you know, when we record to push each other to the next level, and we pushed him really to to go extreme and, and show what he can do. He's such a great drummer. And on the first two albums for us, you can hear it, but on the thing on the new album, he did his best job because we there was no borders this time. We let him play and uh, and he could really put a lot of crazy feels and uh, 
and put all his skills into the songs. And of course, the songs this time also have the value to deliver this, you know. So uh, it was a good mix, and I think this is by far his best work. And uh, right, and um, people uh, people will acknowledge this time, I'm sure. Definitely, definitely right. And and you've also written a song about uh, about the bands, like the Elegant Pigs, which is about uh, how rock and roll is, you know. Has been screwed up by bands taking samples and laptops on stage exactly, to have that, yeah. that essence and the ambience. But how for you? How does it feel like? I mean, you've played so many festivals. I'm sure you would have seen bands doing that stuff live. How does it feel yeah, to have? Yeah, that? you know, it's disappointing because sometimes you know I expect this from modern bands, from young bands, from all those keyboard bands. Yeah, I expect them to use samples and backing tracks and and for, it's kind of normal nowadays. But then I, I saw it like also classical heavy metal bands mm -hmm. are using this, you know. And it sucks. When the, sing, when, when the singer doesn't sound good anymore, you know, they just let a backing track run through the whole song, mm -hmm. you know. And what happens is the singer puts his voice on top of the backing tracks uh, where he's singing and the rest is, is backing moves. It's basically a playback, you know. Right. And I saw this... Uh, I saw it with some classical metal bands, like some very well-known bands also, and, and it was sad, you know, and uh, and uh, I see it more and more in the last years, and it's just a sad, a sad evolution, you know, if rock and roll goes this way, it's, it's kind of, you know, I don't want to be a part of rock and roll anymore, it's just all fake, you know, for me rock and roll was pure and honest, and it was all the difference between rock and roll and pop music was always we play live, you know, right, and right. rock and roll doesn't have to be perfect. You want to hear the different when it's live, it's live, it's a little bit more raw, you know. True. And uh, so this uh, this uh, evolution is a, a sad thing. And uh, when I talk to my friends about it and, uh, you know, they're like, there's no more, how do you say this? They don't feel bad about it anymore. It's kind of normal. They're like, oh, everybody does. You know? It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, you know, everybody does it and, oh, come on, you know, it makes me sound better live and, you know, people want to have a, hear a good concert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what the fuck, then go into do the rehearsal room and, and rehearse <laughs> longer, you know? Right. right. It's, it's just fake and uh, I know a lot of people are going to hate me for writing this song because, uh, uh, you know, it's still like a, a untold secret. You know, the sure. fans don't know. Sure, Most of the fans go to the shows and they say, wow, it was great tonight. They don't want to think about being cheated by by the bands they like, you know. But I, I'm just for me, this the song was like just like a, a screaming wake up call, like what the fuck is going on, you know. Right. And, uh, sometimes I uh, I can't believe that some of even my heroes are doing this nowadays. And you know, if you if you can't do it anymore, then just don't tour, you know. Easy. <laughs> right. Just don't play it. That's absolutely right. What about bands are doing? I mean, is there anything planned? I know this year is going to be pretty much busy with, with obviously the album, and you may have, you yeah. know, also have a tour as well. But is there anything happening? Because that album, man, I still have a copy of it. I love it every time I listen to it. The Panther one, you mean? Yeah. I mean, we're actually, you know, we will do another album. I, I talked to Nuclear Blast about it, and they, they liked the record, and it was selling pretty well also, and... And they uh, extended our contract, so that's the good news. Mm -hmm. So there will be another Panzer album next year, I think. But awesome. now that I'm focusing 100% on destruction, it's kind of hard to, to see when and where. I'm still in touch with the guys, and we will see you know, how we're going to do it. And uh, at the moment, I will focus on destruction 100%. And when it's time for Panzer, we're going to... Uh, go back, back, go back and do the writing mode, and you know I can even write some pencil material in between destruction tours. That's not a problem, right. I know. But, uh, but at the moment, I want to focus on destruction, and then we see. But there will be another Panzer album in 2017, I'm sure. And uh, and yeah, it, it's a lot of people really dig the album. We still get a lot of messages and people saying, "Wow, I just got the album lately, and I love it. It's still in my car playing every day." So. It's it has definitely hit the nerve of, of some kind of old school heavy metal fans. That's right. Good to hear that. And how, and how about uh, the news today, which came out that Axel Rose is now the frontman of ACDC for the upcoming uh, tour. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I mean, it's a great promotional gag, you know. But uh, for real, I don't know why they're doing this. Actually, it's kind of it's weird. I mean. You know, Axl Rose has a, a legacy of fucking up concerts and you know, <laughs> not being very reliable. And 
and also his voice is not have just, you have you heard the 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 recent tours the the footage which is out i think you know he uh, it's not worse but it's actually slightly better i would say yeah i i saw him on his worst when he was so fat that he couldn't sing anymore when he played rock in rio three years ago mm -hmm. we were also on rock in rio we played there and I saw the Axel Rose performance on TV in, in Rio de Janeiro the mm -hmm. day before we played. Mm -hmm. And it was so, it actually was after us, I think. It was on Sunday. We played on Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was fucking terrible, you know. And I think he lost some weight and he maybe stopped doing so many drugs. And I guess uh, he's, he has a better voice now again. He's back, back to, like, to a better singer. But... I mean, singing ACDC every night, you know, this is a lot of, a lot of energy for the vocals, you know. Sure. sure. I, I don't, I don't think he's gonna be able to do that. Actually, I've, I mean, it would be a miracle if they, if you don't have to cancel shows, you know. <laughs> but right. uh, I mean, you know, Axel Rose uh, definitely has uh, did some great albums with Guns N' Roses in the past, you know, and yeah. and he used to be a great singer. Maybe he's back, but I don't think he was a good choice. There would have been many, many other singers that would have fit much better. You know, like the guy from Accept or um, Storace from Crocus or so guys that are also, you know, in the same same age and in the same in the same time. You know, that would fit much better. Which but, one would fit better, Udo or or, Tornel, or Mark Tornello? I, 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 yeah, uh, Torello. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, he's actually fantastic for his. He's also like not the the youngest anymore. He's like sixty, I think. Yeah, something. he's around fifty-five. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but he's still in great shape, Indeed. and and I think also Max uh, Storace from Crocus, mm -hmm. he's still in amazing shape. I I had a show with him two years ago, and he was warming up backstage, mm -hmm. and he was so good. And I asked him how old he is, and he said he was like, and it was like two years ago, he was sixty or sixty two oh. or something already. I think he's also like old, but still so good, you know. So. I think Sriracha would have been the perfect guy for, for ACDC. But, uh, okay, Axel Rose definitely has the better promotion, you know. Definitely. <laughs> How about touring, uh, Shamir? Uh, anything planned this year in Europe as a full-fledged uh, headlining tour? Yeah, we're going to go on tour in September and October. Mm -hmm. um, su supporting co-headlining will be Flotsam and Chatsam. Ah, awesome. Then there will be Enforcer from Sweden on the yeah. bill. Also, Nervosa from Brazil. Awesome, good to hear. They have a new album coming out, Flotsam. Uh, yeah, they have. Yeah, no, we have Nervosa have a new album coming out soon, and they're also Flotsam and Chatsam going to come one month out after our album. Right. So it's. I think it's a very good billing, having like thrash and a little bit more melodic uh, thrash, you know, together. It's gonna right, be, right. Nervosa are killing it. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Absolutely. Good to hear that, man. I hope you get to come back to India sometime down the road. It was wonderful seeing you at Metal Hammer Paradise. We met there. We had a chat as well. And right, I hope, yeah. uh, you know, you come back to India. Yeah, I, I saw I saw the, the, the festival was uh, open air again this year, right? Yes, that's right. The Bangalore. Yeah, it was Napalm Death okay, and uh, Inquisition from uh, and Belfigur uh, had come. Ah, Belfigur. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah Belfigur. Helmut wrote me before the tour and uh, before they went over and asked me how it was for us last time but uh, i read a lot of fans from india were like hey we need more festivals than just one festival in india because we can't travel so far true and stuff you know and i so, hope you get to come back down the road and, and play again especially for hopefully. you know under attack coming out so it would be great hopefully it's a strong record so hopefully we can play as much as possible everywhere and come back to india awesome and good to hear that before we conclude how about you just Describe or define the sound of Under Attack in just one sentence. In one sentence. That's right. Th that's difficult. I would say it's a, uh, it's a, uh, aggressive punch in your face, with a lot of catchy moments and uh, little surprises in a pure heavy metal thrash metal way, and uh, yeah, I think it's. It's for us the best destruction album, in my, from my point of view, the best destruction album since many years, and hopefully people will have the same opinion. Awesome, man. Good to hear that. Good luck with the release and the tour. I'll catch you definitely sometime in Europe later this year. Okay. Thank you very much. Take good care, to hear man. from you. Okay. You have too. a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.